The intro video was the logo for The Human Perspective, which has purple and orange concentric circles around a photo of Judy Human. This fades into a video with a pink border that flips between Kylie Miller and Judy Human in one frame and Kristen Joyner in another. Kylie is a white woman with medium brown highlighted hair, wearing a lilac shirt and gold earrings. Judy is a white woman who has short brown hair and uses a wheelchair. She is wearing red glasses and a red button-down shirt. Behind them is the dining room of Judy's home. Kristen is a white woman with curly blonde hair and blue eyes, wearing a white shirt. Behind her is the kitchen of her home. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Human Perspective. And today we're doing a special edition. Kylie Miller, who's recently joined our team, thought that it'd be really interesting if we did a discussion between Kristen Joyner and myself about how the book came about, our writing, etc. So that's what we're going to do. And Kylie's going to do the interviewing and it's going to be fun. Yeah. So first of all, welcome, Kylie. Thank you. And welcome, Kristen Joyner. Thank it's you. I'd actually like to start with Kristen. Um, I think a lot of people know Judy and obviously the book covers Judy's story. So let's get to know who you are. Can you just kind of tell everyone your background and who you are? So I've been working um, for social change through nonprofits. Um, I had been um, for about 20 years and I was living in Berkeley, California. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from my agent, um, Jill Marr at the Sandra Dykstra Agency, literary agency. And she said, would you like to work with Judy Heumann um, as a co-author on her memoir? And um, at that time I was taking the train at or the BART, <laughs> I was catching the BART um, at, the, uh, at a station where I had to walk through the Ed Roberts Center to get to the stop. And I never knew who Ed Roberts was. When my agent asked me if I was interested, she asked me, would you like to meet with Stuart James who is the head of the Center for Independent Living which was housed in the Ed Roberts Center which was what I was walking through every day to get the BART. So for the first time I stopped in that building and I realized for the first time there were these huge pictures on all of the walls of the 504 Synod. And I went up the elevator to meet Stuart James at the Center for Independent Living and we had this amazing meeting. It was like a whole world opened up that I had been walking next to my whole life in many different ways and literally in that chapter of my life walking through the BART station and I never knew it. My first thought was how is it possible that I'm, you know, I've been working in human rights, I've been working on representation issues, I've been working on these issues and I never knew this story. It blew my mind. I guess we got kind of your side of how this all fell into place. What happened on your side, Judy? How did you decide that you wanted to write a memoir? And how did you decide that you specifically wanted a co-author? Well, people had been talking to me for many years about writing a book. Mm -hmm. And I never had any desire in trying to write a book myself. I consider myself pretty good with oral words, but I am very nervous about writing. So um, it was very exciting actually, although I was skeptical as I always am <laughs> about whether or not there would really be a book and would anybody wanna work with me on writing it? Would anybody wanna publish it? And for me, um, Kristen, as a non-disabled person who someone admittedly didn't know anything about the disability rights movement, that in and of itself was something I really had to think a lot about. Um, I liked the fact that you were honest in what you were saying about not knowing about the movement, but also that you were very interested. And so I thought, well, if they're recommending her, um, and obviously there was an interest in trying to get a book published, that they wouldn't be recommending somebody that they felt wouldn't be able to be a good writer. I mean, I was hesitant um, for a while, just, I think it was really about how the process would work uh, because we didn't live in the same area. So Kristen, as you were saying, you were living in the Bay Area and you were coming back and forth 
it was beginning to work well. We were beginning to understand each other better. And then Kristen left the job here. And so then we were working between San Francisco and DC. Then there was a big surprise when Kristen told me that her husband got a job in New Zealand <laughs> and they were going to move to New Zealand. And honestly, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I think we were invested enough. And Chris was like, oh, don't worry. But by that time, we've had already spent multiple weekends, you know, all day Saturday or Sunday together. And I had hours and hours and hours of in interviews and had interviewed people in California and New York. And yeah. So by that time, we were really more in the stage of writing. Well, I was still in the stage of getting to know you through your writing. Talk a little bit about your writing style. Like when you write, what do you need to do? Yeah. So Judy would say, we need to write. And I said, okay, well, I'll call you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> because we were in the habit of talking. But yeah, so then I would have to disappear and, and write a draft, um, you know, and then, and, then, and then share it with Judy. And then we would talk about what I'd written and said, is this accurate? Does this seem right? And Judy would say, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was really, you know, for me, what was really valuable about working with Kristen and are getting a level of um, like a rhythm, I think for both of us, me with a no, 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 and <laughs> Kristen with you don't understand. And that, I mean, it wasn't a conflict conflict, but it was really being able to trust each other enough that we could have honest discussions. I mean, one of the things I was really attentive to when we were doing it was trying to figure out what the story was, sort of like, you know, in a memoir, you're basically making an offering of the wisdom that you've learned and sort of like an argument that's like a universal, a universal learning, you know, or a less life lesson in a way. So I think that's what was going on in my mind. So, so sometimes when we had conflict, it was when well, we, you know, it was when I was trying to tell that story, you know, she, you know, Judy was often, often the argument was she, she felt like I was leaving too much out. But I think, you know, overall, the experience that we had, the whole thing was a little bit of a comedy, as well as um, a, a little bit stressful, right? I mean, our timelines were stressful. And that's what I wanted to ask next was kind of like, what was the timeline of the process? Like, when did you guys meet? And then the book obviously was published early 2020, but how long did it take you guys to write it? Was it a four or five year process overall? I think we either talk at the end of 2016 or the beginning of 2017. And I think it might've been 2017 in like May or June that you came here. The book was finally done in what September or October of 2019. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we spent, so the first year was research. Mm -hmm. I used, um, I accessed the interviews that um, at the Bancroft Library at the University of California in Berkeley. They have a whole project, oral history project on the, on the 504 sit-in. So the University of California also had some of the footage from um, various documentaries in their archives. So I could, you can't check it out, but I could go and watch it in the, at the university. So it was the research for the first year and then writing for a year. Feels like that was a longer project, but anyway. Oh, because there was there were breaks when the when our agent was taking out to the market, and uh, we were negotiating a contract with Beacon, so that added time to right. it. And then the young adult book came into play. So was that a quicker process because you guys were adapting what was already published? The young adult version was written in six weeks. That was the biggest thing about the young adult book was to figure out what, how to translate um, kind of these adult events into a sort of teenage voice that would appeal to nine to you know 12 year olds. All right, last question. And it is from Mallory Alice. And this is for both of you. 
what parts of the writing process surprised you the most? And I know we've talked a lot about the writing process, so. That we got through it. Yeah, that, that you we, got through it. <laughs> yes, that we got through it, that we produced a good product, that people like it, they want to read it, and that um, people are still wanting to read it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, up until the last minute, I had we had Joanna, our editor at Beacon, was emailing and saying, where is the book? And Judy was saying, we have to change this. We have to change that. And I was saying, no, we're done. <laughs> so the fact that it's done is uh, amazing. We're also looking at the possibility of doing some additional writing in the future. Oh. Can you talk about it or no? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. It's been awesome. And I'd really like to thank Kylie for this idea. Thank you both. That history won't forget us or try to minimize our pain and so why.